This is Jane Lowe on site here at the Vocal Hotel in Orchard Road at SingCon 2023. And this is the first uh, cybersecurity conference here in Singapore for the year 2023. And I'm very uh, pleased and very privileged to have Dr. Zida Kerr, who is the assistant professor with the Singapore Management University here in Singapore, to share with us some of his highlights on his talk earlier on a case study on ransomware incident response handling. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, Dr. Kerr, for your time today. Yes, yeah, so the case study um, basically is a case that you have encountered back in Hong Kong. Right. I believe a couple of years ago. Um, uh, two years ago. Two years ago. So that was during the height of the COVID pandemic. Yeah, and also the height of the Bitcoin price. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. And that was, uh, that's probably a big motivation for many uh, uh, cyber criminals. Now, um, so this uh, incident, the ransomware incident, it's um, the target, the victim here, we are talking about uh, SME. So, yes. right, okay. And, um, and you mentioned that they have uh, backup, but unfortunately, the backup was also encrypted. Yes, because uh, actually, those uh, management, they seek for convenience. They just connect the backup drive uh, online so that uh, whenever the uh, attackers mm -hmm. uh, penetrate to the network, they can also access to this uh, backup device and encrypt those files as well. So the backup, I, I'm supposing that is not um, hosted with a cloud, third-party cloud service provider? Yeah, just a network drive. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Right. And so what do you think is the ransomware operator? What were they thinking about when they target this particular victim? So they understand their vulnerability, I guess, uh, their yeah. lack of uh, situational awareness, like you yes. say, when it comes to cybersecurity. Right. First, uh, these uh, typically for SMEs, right? They don't have uh, many uh, resource or security awareness to conduct this uh, situational awareness mm -hmm. exercise. Like, uh, what kind of uh, access do they have? What kind of uh, possible threats and vulnerabilities they have? And uh, secondly, uh, many of these SMEs, right? They are still using some legacy technologies. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, case. The attacker is actually uh, penetrates through the company's network with uh, Eternal Blue, which is a uh, vulnerability a few years ago. Right? right, from the WannaCry, if I understand. Right, right. so yeah. quite a long time ago. Yes. Right, okay. So we'll talk about some of the lessons learned from a uh, technical perspective, but mm. I also wanted to explore some of the lessons learned uh, from a cultural and governance perspective. Mm. But before we come to that, so focusing on this uh, incident, uh, this case study, so the, um, the victim received a ransom note right. one morning, I guess. Uh, yeah. They woke up and they found this ransom note and everything was en encrypted. Yes. And they contacted you. Yeah. Um, and your colleagues. And in this ransom note, uh, if we look at some of the typical sort of ransom uh, incidents, normally, you know, they will say, do not contact the police. Otherwise, you know, this and that will happen. So with a cyber security type of, or rather a cyber incident type of uh, ransom uh, note, is there any indication of do not contact the police? Actually, uh, we seldom see this kind of uh, comments in the ransom notes because uh, they know that yeah, even if you contact the police, the police uh, won't be able to help you that much. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, and did they say do not contact negotiators, do not contact your lawyers, just pay us? <laughs> no, I think uh, they let you to contact the lawyers and negotiators. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, that's fine, right? Okay. You can negotiate, you can ask for legal advice. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, at the end of the day, if you pay us, we are happy. If you don't pay us, you suffer, right? Ah, oh, right. So that strikes me that they are very confident that the law enforcement will not be able to catch them. Right. Right, okay. So in this case, um, eventually, uh, two Bitcoin, or no, rather, they asked for two Bitcoin, yeah. and 1.5 Bitcoin was paid out eventually. Yeah, after right. the negotiation, yeah. Right. And how long did this whole period... Um, this um, number of days in terms of, you know, the negotiation and also the evaluation. I think evaluation. it's uh, around three days. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from the time that they received the ransom note to actually completion of the negotiation and paying the ransom was only three days. Yeah. Wow, that was pretty rapid. Yeah, because, you know, uh, in the, at the beginning of the ransom notes, they say that, yeah, within 72 hours, if you don't contact us, yeah, we will just release off of your data. Mm. It's a kind of uh, another extortion, right? 
Right, okay. And in this case, the SME realised that the data that, they, uh, that had been held hostage is actually quite valuable and right. could not be released. Yeah, and also they don't have the backup. So in order to uh, recover the business operations, yeah, they have to find some way to get back the data, mm. which is, uh, yeah, just pay the ransom, right? Right, okay. So how much time did you and your colleagues spend on evaluate or, or an analyzing the ransomware malware? Or was that not uh, quite important or the, the, the priority I think was uh, at the beginning, uh, we spent quite a lot of time in uh, identifying the uh, assets and the machines in the organization. Mm. Because uh, as I mentioned before, the company didn't uh, have a proper situational awareness. They don't manage uh, an infantry list. So the first thing we do is, uh, yeah, what kind of machines do you have, right? Right, what okay. What kind of uh, machines are affected? So this we is need to, to contain the malware, yeah, yes. Right. Right, okay. So for the actual analysis of the uh, ransomware binary, mm. we actually do it uh, later on because it's uh, less important. Mm -hmm. The more important thing is uh, we need to uh, stop the breed and then we cover the file. And after that, yeah. Ah, right, okay. For the ransomware, what, what kind of behaviors they, they have, yeah, we can do it later, right? Oh, okay. So you actually try to attempt to see whether you can recover the files without paying the ransom first. Right. Right, okay, I see, I see. And um, when there was a determination that there's a need to pay the ransom to recover the files, what kind of confidence um, did the company and also your, 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 you and your colleagues place on that the decryption that will be provided is actually going to decrypt the files? Uh, because this is a pretty uh, well-known ransomware group. So oh, I think right. it's uh, around 80 to 90% should be uh, okay, right? Pretty professional uh, criminal group. Huh? Oh, so you actually know who the criminal, which criminal group it was? Yeah. And how did you determine that? Yeah, uh, because they uh, published the, uh, these uh, dark web links on the ransom notes, right? Oh, so when you visit those I see. Uh, ransom notes, uh, actually uh, the link in, in the ransom notes, you go to the portal page that mm. you can uh, check with the operator. And then, yeah, it shows yeah, oh, right. which ransomware group, right? Oh, okay. So it sort of showed their credentials in some ways that saying that, wow, they, were, they had quite a high level of success rate. Yeah. Right, okay. So that's why many of these uh, ransomware groups, we have, uh, they even uh, outsource uh, some of these things, or I should say we sell some of their mm -hmm. uh, operations, so we call it as a ransomware as a service. Correct. So some other criminals who are interested in uh, uh, launching ransomware mm -hmm. attacks to uh, different companies, they can actually buy these uh, ransomware as a service mm -hmm. things and then yeah, get the tools and yep. get the platform operators as well. Right, okay. So this uh, ransomware group, is it something that you can disclose or not? Yeah, I think it's a uh, lot big, right? Oh, a lot big, okay. Right, and whether it's been attributed correctly to a certain sort of nation, um, we don't know, right? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, but uh, what I actually am curious about is, you know, Russia uh, government and had also shut down quite a big uh, ransomware group right. in the last year, I believe. Yes. Right. And uh, how that has impacted some of, you know, these uh, ransomware operators. Right, yeah. yeah. During that period of time, I think uh, the company we are having this uh, case is uh, uh, operating by a ransomware group previously known as another name, right? And then it's uh, taken down by the Russian government. And then it's, but for some reason, it's uh, a follow-up by the new group, which is lot bigger. Right? Oh, right. Okay, yeah. so it reincarnated as a new group, un yeah. well, or, or as under a different name. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, yeah, so um, the other question I think many of the audience will be interested in is, you know, for SMEs who have no experience with cryptocurrency, right, and you are given such a short time frame to actually pay up. Right. I guess the only choice is to go to the crypto exchange to get some of these Bitcoins because yes. it's impossible to get it through peer-to-peer. -peer right. Of. You can't just mine one. Right. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, um, what kind of KYC did the exchange place on the organization to open an account? Because most exchanges will say, right, why, why do you need a, you know, Bitcoin, right? Um, yeah. Typically, uh, for these uh, KYC things, they'll ask you to upload your uh, 
for individuals to ask you to upload a passport and a, or maybe the identity documents mm. so that yeah you know yeah it's uh, from this particular person for organization I'm not quite sure but I guess uh, the process should be similar. You upload those uh, uh, mm-hmm. certification about an organization. Right. But typically for this uh, exchange, it's uh, used by individual more often. Mm-hmm. Right. So I guess in this case, um, <coughs> whether the organization choose to disclose that it's for you know, ransomware payment is really up to them. Yeah. So you just need to have the identity documents. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in terms of um, the lessons learned, right? Um, so we talked about how the backups were on, always online and therefore it was encrypted. Right. Right, and also the lack of situational awareness um, yeah. that, you know, um, after the incident happened, you have to actually get the organization to sit down and go through the um, list of assets that right. they have that may be exposed. Um, so I guess the organization took those lessons well, yes. and then they also upgraded their server versions, they upgraded their operating systems. Right. So a lot of technical upgrades. Now the question is, what impact did the incident have on their uh, organization culture on, and also on their governance as well? Yeah. What, what do you think? I think they are more uh, aware of uh, different kinds of uh, security threats. And uh, of course, uh, they may be uh, more careful about uh, these uh, different threats, like uh, even for phishing mm. or maybe uh, some other uh, uh, possible malicious website, they will be uh, come more careful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, you mentioned phishing, so which yeah. I assume is the initial way that the uh, operator gain access or... or uh, actually uh, not. No. Uh, so for the uh, operator gain access for this case, they use uh, Eternal Brew, which is a uh, uh, vulnerabilities in uh, Windows uh, operating systems. Mm-hmm. So, so as the first step, uh, you don't need to send any emails or any things. Just uh, connect to the uh, machine that is uh, old enough, right, with these uh, vulnerabilities, mm. but and then send some uh, specially craft uh, content or what we call payload, right, and then you can uh, get a uh, code execution already. So they send a payload through a connection that is vulnerable. Right. Right. So without actually um, uh, relying on dropping a malware via phishing. Right. That's, that's what you're saying. Yes. Right. Okay. So, and actually, uh, you did mention that the attacker also sent some tips in terms of how they exploit and, yeah. and some of the, um, uh, the loopholes. Right. So what kind of uh, lessons did the organization gain from that perspective? The... Uh, lesson learned after the uh, operators or malware operate when somewhere operators release the details. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So actually, uh, their details release is uh, consistent with our founding. So basically, uh, we found that the attacker is uh, going through the company's network by mm-hmm. use exploiting the eternal brew, and uh, the attacker also list out the details which are the same. Mm-hmm. So that's why we suggest a uh, company to upgrade the exchange server right. to a cloud-based one. Right, okay. So we just talked about some of the lessons learned that is uh, for this particular organization, yeah. but it is uh, applicable to all organizations uh, out there, especially right. for um, SMEs as yes. well in Singapore, right? Yeah. Not just in Hong Kong. Not just in Hong Kong, yeah. Right, so very important to go through your, to have an asset inventory, understand right. what kind of software is running on your yeah. equipment. That sounds uh, quite straightforward. Right. And also, one of the most common uh, issues in SME is, uh, yeah, they are using some uh, legacy system with uh, vulnerable components. Mm. So in uh, this particular case, it's a, uh, is vulnerable to this uh, eternal brew uh, mm-hmm. SMP attack. In other case, maybe uh, they are hosting a web server. Then, yeah, if you are using some very old version mm-hmm. web server, the attacker can uh, connect this mm-hmm. uh, web server and then mm-hmm. uh, run arbitrary code on your server that's as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why uh, for the small companies, uh, make sure after you get your inventory list, right, make sure you check out the version to see whether it's uh, mm-hmm. updated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess uh, at the end of the day, whether to pay ransom or not, the, and the organization also has to be prepared to have that, those kind of conversations beforehand. Yeah. And also any sort of response uh, handbook is you know, the law enforcement context right at hand yeah. so that you can get your help and cooperation as yes. soon as possible. Yes. 
right? Um, obviously, there's uh, also mentioned at the end of your presentation that some countries have sanctions, like the OFAC sanctions, right? And, right. Um, so to be aware of that. But at the end of the day, if the organization work with the law enforcement, um, that is going to be a big help yeah. in resolving the case. Yeah, that may be better. But you know, uh, even though if you work with uh, law enforcement, yeah, you don't know what's, where the fun goes, right? Mm. Some people may argue that, yeah, it could be go to some of your friends of the board of directors. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. <laughs> Maybe you do these tricks to do money laundering. Wow. So that's why uh, okay, interesting. That the, thing the, best, <laughs> the best recommendation is uh, not to pay the ransom, right? Mm. But sometimes uh, you can't really do so. Mm. Then yeah, you have to consider or consult your uh, legal team mm. to see uh, whether it's uh, appropriate mm. to pay the ransom to recover the file. But for the data leakage uh, type of extortion, yeah, just don't pay it. Mm. Because uh, even if you pay it, they may still leak out your data, right? That's right. You, it, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee, right? It's a, it's a little bit like an old-fashioned blackmail, isn't it? Right. Yeah, once you start paying, they know that you will pay. Yeah, so right. those you don't pay, right? Right, okay. I, I guess it's a long conversation for another day in terms of, you know, whether to pay a ransom. Mm. Um, very interesting uh, talk that you gave us. Uh, so, Dr. K... Thank you so much Thank you, for your Jane. time today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.